Welcome back. In our first part of this series, we took a look at the architecture. Now we're going to take a look at a deployment of a cluster in NC2 with Flow Virtual Networking enabled. And we're also going to take a look at a NoNAT setup. So let's get started. In our NC2 portal, we're going to deploy a brand new cluster that is above AOS 6.8. We'll select a general purpose cluster here and the cluster name. We'll call it Acme FVN. We're going to deploy this into the North Virginia region. Now, a Nutanix cluster cannot span availability zones, so if you're doing new or existing, everything will be deployed into that one availability zone. We're going to deploy into an existing network as a lot of customers are already using the cloud and have security and other features already set up. So we'll do an existing deployment. We'll hit next. We'll pick our licensing, our AOS version, and hit next. Here, we'll pick our bare metal type have a wide variety to select from. We'll just go with the Z1D, a three host cluster, and hit next. Now on the networking side, we're going to use the existing network. We pick our VPC, which we're going to deploy into. The cluster management subnet needs to be directly used only for the bare metal nodes. It's highly recommended you don't share this with any other AWS subnets. So if you already have IPs being used in a subnet, it's best to create a new one. Now here, by clicking off Flow Virtual Networking, it will also deploy Prism Central for us, which is a requirement as the Flow Virtual Networking stack is located in Prism Central. We do have the ability to lock down communication to our bare metal nodes using an SSH key. So we already have one set up. And here, this access policy is where we're using AWS security groups to prevent access. Uh, if you've watched our diagram from before, the user management, which was listed in red, this is where we would affect those settings. I'm going to put in my on-prem network and along with the AWS VPC range. It's quite broad and probably not recommended, but it will allow myself to get access from my jump host as I have a VPN already set up. So you're gonna want something more probably fine grain from a CIDR range, but this is just really from an ease of use. And we can check these settings and our AWS security groups later in the video. So we'll hit next. Now we're not going to use cluster protect. So we'll hit next here, cluster protect. If you're a cloud only cluster, you can back up your VMs to S3 and Prism Central. You can pick your Prism Central configuration. We'll go with a large setup uh, you can see the default name this and um, password. This can be changed later. Now you do need a dedicated Prism Central network. The minimum is a slash 28. My environment is a slash 27. And the flow virtual networking has to be a slash 24. So we will assign it a network and hit next. And so now with that, we can deploy our network and move on to setting up our transit VPC and our no NAT environment. This process usually takes about 45 minutes, 20 minutes to deploy the cluster and another 20 minutes to set up Prism Central and the networking. While the cluster is being deployed, we can take a look at our transit gateway in our environment. So here we have our transit ACME gateway. If we go into the route table, 
we see that we have attachments for our VPC. This VPC is where our cluster is being deployed. We also have a VPN attached, allowing connectivity to our private data center. Now, if we go on the route section, we have the range from our VPC, which automatically gets propagated. We've added a route for our on-prem network going to our VPN. And then we've already added in our ERP prefix here, which then will direct us to our VPC where the cluster is being deployed. Once traffic from on-prem reaches this point, it will see the ERP and know to direct it to the VPC. Once Flow Virtual Networking is fully configured, we can come back and take a look at the route tables within our VPC, which will finish the path. Now we'll go into our subnets. So we have our Flow VPC, which we're using. So we'll go and click on that. Here we can see all of our subnet ranges, which are in our AZ, and they're all connected to our private route table. We see that we have this FEN server. We're going to add this subnet as a native subnet just to show that native networking and Flow Virtual Networking can live together. So subnets, search by FVN. So here we have all of our FVN subnets. When we go to add this to our prism element, we will not have to do anything other than find the CIDR range and add it to our cluster. We have our cluster up and running. We can actually see that it was increased to five nodes. I was doing some testing, but same cluster. Now, if we go to our network page, we have all of the networking configuration. We could go directly to Prism Element, which we'll do. We'll add a native subnet into there just to show that native networking works without Prism Central. And then our Prism Central is also up and ready so we can log into that as well. Just flopping over to our jump host. Here we have Prism Element already logged in. We see it's connected. If we want to add in the native network, we go to settings network configuration. We see that Prism Central is a native subnet. Create subnet. Uh, FVN servers. Now you don't have to have the name the same. You probably want it close or similar to keep some level of sanity. We add in that subnet 131 and we will add a small prefix. Give it DNS. Hit save. So now if we bring up VMs on that network, they'll grab a native AWS IP, which would be fully routable. Now we can take a look at setting up our NoNAT environment. So NoNAT, we're first in our VPC, we just have our transit VPC. We can see we have this point to point external subnet set up. Click on the transit VPC. Now we'll go add an additional subnet, create subnet, our no net subnet. Now this uh, range is private. It won't get shown to the rest of your network. So it can really be anything that you want it to be. We give an address pool uh, as other VPCs that get used. We'll grab an address for routing out of the network. 
192.9.5.0.20. And hit create. <clears throat> now we'll have two external networks to select from for routing options, either through the NAT or the no NAT. We'll still use the NAT for getting out to the internet on our cluster. So now that we have an external subnet, we'll create an additional VPC. We'll call this Acme servers. And we will associate our NAT setup. Um, here, we'll actually just set this as the default. We'll come back and add this after we've configured our transit VPC. We'll hit create. So now we have a VPC for Acme servers. We will add a subnet, create subnet. Well, our financial servers, we'll just call it fin1, 172.50.0.0 slash 24. Also give this a range to use. Supply DNS, hit create. So now if we look, we have our native networking. We have a subnet in our overlay. We need to add the external routable prefix to our transit VPC. So in this case, our transit VPC we are going to update it. Now we want to advertise that subnet. So it was a slash 24, but we could do something larger here. Uh, and then as long as our user subnets were within that range, it would advertise everything to them. So 50.0.0 slash .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 24. We'll hit update. Now, adding this is going to automatically add the ENI. So we'll flop back over to AWS and take a look. So now, if we, in our FEN VPC, we have all of our subnets. If we go into the public route table, so go to route tables and routes, we see that we have this ENI. Now all traffic that is destined is going to head to 172.50/24, which will get pointed to that FEN ENI, and we are good to go on that standpoint. We have one configuration to still make. We still need to add the ERP, the external routable address to our VPC. So Acme servers, hit update. <clears throat> and we will add it here as well. And now any traffic that needs to get to this overlay network will have a route to get there. Now we can also tell what host is hosting the point to point link. If we go back into our VPCs on our transit VPC, if you click on the associated subnets, 
you will see what host is currently hosting that connection. And there you go. We have our no NAT set up and we're ready to deploy. Flow Virtual Networking is pretty easy to set up with the automatic deployment in the NC2 portal. And with the NoNAT setup, you'll have full access to all AWS services. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.